Hi, this is your Swapnil Bhatia and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us once again, Eric Shockey, Director of Cybersecurity Strategy at Salt Security. Eric, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to be back. I'm glad to see you again. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And today we are going to talk about API security threat report that you folks work on. Uh, before we deep dive into this report, just give us a quick overview of the idea, goal behind this report. Yeah, the idea is, is to understand from our customer's perspective what they're seeing when it comes to API security threats in their organizations. Um, so the report was, I think we had around 250 security professionals that responded to a variety of questions and we just used it to get their feedback. Um, but it's also a great mechanism to, you know, if, if, if customers or organizations are new to um, to API security, it's a great way for them to sort of see what others are, are thinking about when it comes to API security. So that's sort of the point of the report. Now let's dive deep into some of the key findings. I think it was interesting because if you look at what we saw in the in the survey res results, um, we had almost a doubling of API attacks that were recognized in the last year. So it was about 37% or so of organizations said they had some kind of attack, which was a, a big jump from from last year, right? So that's obviously problematic. Uh, we want to make sure that, the, that that isn't causing harm to our to our customers. Um, on the flip side of that, only about seven and a half, eight percent of respondents said they had what they considered a sort of an advanced API security solution, right? So it's a problem, right? If you have an explosion in attacks, but you don't have an advanced solution to handle that, obviously there's there's some big gaps there that we need to help uh, figure out how to how to breach and, and figure out how to how to deal with. A um, couple other interesting points, I think. Um, we talk a lot about API discovery and just understanding what your API ecosystem looks like. Um, sort of zombie APIs or unknown APIs or APIs that are just doing their own thing was a, another big concern. About 70% of respondents said they had this concern around zombie APIs or what they couldn't see or, or didn't know about. Um, and then, again, it goes back to this thing of, okay, we, you know, the customers have this concern, but what do they do to help mitigate that? Only 60% or so of our customers that responded said they had, or not customers, but, but, but folks we surveyed said that they had a good way to discover APIs, right? So they have this problem of, I don't even know what my APIs are, and they also don't have a great mechanism for finding those APIs within their ecosystem. So these respondents, you know, they had a, a big sort of problem uh, with that. And then finally, I think the point to make around just security in general from an API perspective is that obviously API gateways and WAFs have been around for a, a number of years, but many of the respondents to the survey said, well, we, we probably have a gateway or a WAF, but it probably isn't going to be sufficient to help us resolve um, uh, you know, these advanced API threats. And so that was another big disconnect of like, we have something, we have, you know, a little bit in place, but we don't have enough. And it sort of takes me back to the days of, you know, just general antivirus where, you know, you had the AV product and you had this thing that had all these AV definitions and that was okay. But to really get those more advanced uh, type threats, you needed something more back in, back, back in the endpoint security days. And the same thing is going now with APIs where, you know, API gateways or WAFs might be okay for the standard type threats. But when it comes to the more advanced things, there's, they're just not cutting the, cutting the mustard. Beyond things like zombie APIs, what are the other concerns that you're seeing organizations face? And these are a lot of thing, a lot to do with you know the holy scale sprawl. Uh, I'm not talking about configuration and the actual you know security, threat, but what are the other things that you're seeing which are uh, becoming a concern that you know you saw in this report? I think there's there's a couple big challenges. One is that that customers are still, or organizations are still trying to understand what their ecosystem, their API ecosystem or footprint just looks like. They just don't have a, a clear understanding of that. And so that's sort of a basic level. If you don't even know what you've got to protect, how are you gonna protect it, right? And they're not, they're not even at that point of understanding the full scale of their API ecosystem. And I think that problem is gonna be made, and this wasn't something we surveyed on initially in this in this result. I think what we're gonna do is probably do a, a secondary survey that's sort of a follow-up to this, but 
One of the things we've been seeing recently is a really rapid increase in the prol proliferation of AI-generated APIs, right? So it's not just developers, you know, spending some time making the API. It's like you have an AI-generated API that can be made in minutes. So you're going to see that explosion even 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 bigger. Um, so that's a big one. Just understanding what the what the ecosystem looks like, and then just and then having some kind of way to mitigate the risk associated with that is another uh, another big challenge that customers are. Uh, or the organizations, I should say, are, are trying to uh, manage for. Um, and so, you know, when we, when we have these survey respondents, these organizations responding, I think there's a lot of just, you know, I don't know what I don't know with the APIs. And even if I did know, I, didn't have, I don't have a great way to protect against threats that are coming after me. What is the state of API security? How much awareness is already there so that customers come to you asking for solutions versus you going to customers telling them, hey, you need to protect your API as well? I think it's more so than it would have been in the past. You know, I've, I've been in the market, you know, I've been in security 20 years, I've been in API security less than a year at this point. But even in the less than a year I've been here, I'm seeing way more sort of market understanding that an API security platform is needed to, you know, really protect these things. You're seeing analyst firms take a more active stance on this, right? We're seeing Gartner is doing, you know, a market guide on API security, and, and you're seeing other analysts from taking a, a bigger stance, right? So I think that's also driving the market, right? If, if a customer is seeing that, they're like, oh, geez, I, I, I do need to take a look at this, right? And so, um, and we're doing a lot. I mean, I think at Salt, we've been a leader. Um, obviously, we have a great platform and all of that, but we also have a great labs team and a research team that's out there sort of evangelizing the need for what an organization can do um, to protect against the most advanced, sophisticated API threats. And so I think that's another thing that we really want to lean in on as well. And what kind of volume of API are you seeing there? Is it also growing or it is under control? I mean, I think it's it's dramatically growing, right? And, and some of that goes back to, you know, AI being part of this picture. AI can generate APIs very rapidly. You can, I mean, I can go, to, I, I have no programming experience, but I can go into you know, Google Gemini and say, hey, create me an API that allows me to pull customer information and load it into a, uh, a customer database. And it'll do that for you in like minutes, right? So there's that as a problem. I think the other thing we're seeing is that modern applications are really foundationally built on APIs, where in the past it was like these legacy applications were their own sort of thing. And now we're seeing because of how digital transformation is happening and modern applications are being built, they're being really being built foundationally on APIs. And so that also is exploding the growth. I mean, when we talk to when we talk to our customers, and it wasn't something necessarily in the survey, but when we talk to a customer or a prospect, and we put our product in place or platform in place, they might think, "Oh, I, you know, I've maybe got a hundred APIs or something like that." It's generally about ten x what they think. <laughs> so within within a customer environment, they just don't, you know, it, it's vastly more than they even think that they have, and so that's obviously a, a problematic thing. Now, when it comes to APIs. API related threat and of course the the volume of API who is the right person within organizations whether it's CISOs security team DevSecOps teams who does salt talk to I mean I think it's becoming more and more a conversation that's targeted towards a CISO level audience it wasn't like that I don't think initially what we're seeing is, and what we're trying to enforce the message around, is that APIs should be considered as any other asset within uh, an organization's environment, right? It should be, they should be considered like an endpoint or a server or anything else. They should be considered an asset that's under the security purview of a CISO, right? Um, so we would love to have those conversations with CISOs to explain at, at a high level the, the importance there. Again, when we get down to the fine grain and who's actually managing and, and understanding these programs, it's definitely AppSec uh, folks. DevSecOps is really important. I think, you know, just developers in general, having them part of these conversations because we want to make sure that as we talk about API security, if we can develop secure APIs before they go to production, hey, you're going to start, start solving a lot of problems. So if we can figure out how we talk to the dev, dev folks and understand you know, whether it's posture governance rules that are, are compliance-based rules that should be impl implemented within their uh, API development process, the further down we can get the better because, you know, if you'd, you'd rather not have to deal with a actively exploited API if you can uh, avoid it. Um, so I think it's, a, it's, it's definitely in the past it had been much more so 
you know, AppSec was really the ones that were, they were pushing the message. But now because it is much more of a, an asset thing and that, you know, you think of APIs, so much of a company's data is going through these APIs, it, it, you know, private data, confidential data, you know, all this stuff is going filtering through APIs. It becomes more of a board level conversation, an IT asset kind of conversation. So I think we're trying to get more uh, CISOs involved as well. And when you look at CISOs, what can they do to better guard their organizations, better prepare their teams against these API related security th threats? So I think there's a couple of things. I think one thing is understanding that they need to understand the API asset ecosystem um, because that is a risk factor that a CISO needs to try and start protecting against. So just that initial discovery of what we have within our within our ecosystems that are APIs and, and then obviously accounting for those as, as, as if they're assets is, is a key one. The other one is a posture governance type strategy and understanding you know, can we develop posture governance rules that we tie directly into our APIs to, you know, whether it's PCI concerns or HIPAA concerns or whatever it is, can we tie these rules into our APIs so that when we see something that goes against this particular posture rule or posture governance strategy, it'll flag us right away, right? It'll let us know, hey, there's a potential vulnerability here. Let's resolve it before an attacker can take advantage of it. Um, posture governance is a new one. I mean, I think posture governance and, and, and those sorts of things are new for a, a CISO, especially when it comes to APIs. Uh, and that we saw that bared out in some of the survey results. I think, you know, only about 10% of respondents said they had an actual posture governance strategy in place for their APIs. But having said that, 47%, nearly 50% of them said, we need this. <laughs> we, 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 we don't have it, but we need it, right? And so I think from a CISO's perspective, they want, want that as well. And then at the end of the day, they also want to make sure that there's strong security around that. So maybe they've got an, a, a WAF today. What can they do to strengthen the abilities of that WAF, right? A WAF, like we talked about before, is not going to catch the sophisticated threats. So can you bring in an API security platform, such as what SALT has, that strengthens the capabilities of your existing investment in your WAF and makes it much more able to find those more sophisticated threats? So I think the CISOs would be very interested in that as well. Eric, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the findings of this report. Uh, great insight, as usual. I love to chat with you every time. So uh, I look forward to next screen, and uh, I feel that you know this is a very hard space. So there are a lot of things that are in the, your pipeline which you cannot share now. But I look forward to next screen. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot for your time. Um, I would say, you know, for any, anyone listening to this, check out salt.security. Uh, We've got some great stuff there, great information and, and some demos and all this kind of good stuff. So thanks for your time again and hope you got some, uh, you, you folks got some good information from this.